Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Uh, I have some snakes to unbox, we have some eggs to cut, we have baby snakes. I mean, we have a pretty fun-filled day, I'm not gonna lie to you. So let's push our problems aside and have a great time. I think we're gonna get started by unboxing this box right here. Oops, I'm, uh, uh. No, seriously, guys, seriously. No, no, seriously, guys. This is an empty box. The box I'm getting is actually 22 pythons. Uh, they wouldn't fit in this box anyways. I just, I don't know. I thought it would be funny. So let's go ahead, get the day started by doing some unboxing. And here we go. What do we have here? All right, we're gonna open up the first bag and just kind of roll through these as quick as we can. Again, just always cool stuff. And I know it seems weird, but oftentimes like he'll just send me a thing saying, oh, I'm gonna send you some stuff and I, I forget what he's even gonna send me. So we're just gonna kind of be surprised together if that's okay. You guys know by now, I appreciate that and I kind of like it. So it looks like here we have a bunch of Mojave ball pythons, which are really pretty ones, by the way. They're really, really nice. But, uh, and then one little, Blue-eyed Lucy right here. Take a look at that little monkey right there. So this is actually a lesser to Mojave breeding. Uh, looks like he got a lot of Mojaves and not any lessers, but he did get the one Blue-eyed Lucy in this clutch, so that's absolutely cool. So uh, that is the first bag, and I assume each one of these bags is probably gonna be its own clutch. At least the first bag was that way. We'll see what the next bags have to hold. Next bag, what do we have here? Oh, there's some pretty pretty snakes in here. I like these guys. All right. Again, this should be uh, a whole clutch. It looks like he's just kind of putting everything in one clutch. So it looks like we have a bunch of normal ball pythons here that are actually het for clown. I remember he said that he bred a pastel clown to a het clown or something like that on that lines. Regardless, didn't get very good odds on this clutch, unfortunately, because he got a lot of normal ball pythons that are just het for clown. But again, we love these guys and het clowns are still just really cool as well. And then we have a nice little beautiful normal clown. This has got a really interesting head pattern to it. It's really kind of different. Usually clowns have a lot more spotting. This one's kind of a really solid colored head. I like that clown. And then look at that little monkey right there. That thing is gorgeous. This is a little pastel clown. And pastel clowns can be variable as well. A lot of polymorphism within them. This is kind of a really interesting, again, dark one. I almost wonder if there's some dark line going on in this because a lot of these babies were really dark. And even the heck clowns are pretty kind of interesting looking as well so there must be something else genetically going on which is pretty cool okay two more bags to go Ooh, pretty 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 I, don't, I love it and again we have another beautiful clutch we've got some blue-eyed Lucy's these are really nice patternless ones that look really good it looks like right here we have that looks like maybe just a pastel lesser a pastel butter really pretty just look at all the blushing in the sides and stuff like that and then just another Mojave here and then uh, again just blue-eyed Lucy's so those are always good. Again, people love blue-eyed leucistics. They love bananas. So getting these in stock is going to be really good. We'll get these guys eating over the next couple weeks, and they'll be up on the website. I think we actually have some blue-eyed Lucy's that are going up on the website anyways, anytime. But uh, these will be up in a couple weeks. And what do we have in the last bag here? Ooh, again, pretty. All right. Again, he always sends me really cool stuff. So this one is definitely a bunch of pastel lessers here. You can see those right there. Beautiful little pastel lessers or pastel butters, whichever the case may be. And then the other hand, I have this beautiful little blue-eyed leucistic. So there's a bunch of blue-eyed lucies in this, which is really, really going to be good for us because they are absolutely great sellers and stuff like that. I love them. I really need to raise up some more blue-eyed lucies, to be honest with you, because I have some. But uh, the one you know is getting old and stuff like that now. She's one of the original blue-eyed lucies ever produced so nevertheless really cool so that's it for unboxing for the day definitely some really good ball python so i'll get these guys set up getting feeding here in the next couple days and uh we'll move on to the next you guys might remember that clutch that we cut the other day that was a pastel het for azanthic bred to a double head azanthic lavender well they have hatched out and again this was just that normal baby right here just nothing too normal i mean again just it's a possible het for all kinds of different stuff but remember i told you that a couple of the pastels had that kind of faded look to them and that typically meant that they were probably carrying the azanthic gene. You can really see the kind of muted pastel here as opposed to this one here that's really bright, okay? So you see the difference between these two. This one is probably head azanthic and this one is probably not. Although I find this pretty interesting, there's a little paradox spot on this one right here where you can see some gray coming through, which I find kind of interesting for sure. But again, we had two pastels right here. These two that look like they have that azanthic kind of paling look to it. Again, it's just a heterozygous animal that is expressing some of the azanthic 
xanthic or expressing a little bit of the phenotype, that color phase, right? And then this would just be what I would consider a normal. But again, because it was a double het lavender snow, that one could be het for lavender too. As a matter of fact, all of these could be het for lavender. So what we might do is take a couple of these females, raise them up, and then hopefully prove them out down the road. Nevertheless, a bunch of beautiful babies hatch. So nice to be able to have in-person tours now at the Reptarium. They're not exactly the same, but they're still cool. Gotta wear masks and stuff like that. Nevertheless, these guys are coming up from Houston, Texas. Should be a good time. guys ready for some egg cutting time that's right we actually have a pastel female she was actually dual fathered so it could be one of two fathers the two males she was bred to was actually a black pewter lesser cypress and we also bred her to this woma lesser pinstripe so i'm really kind of hoping the black pastel lesser cypress is the dad because that is definitely the superior male but i'll take whatever i can get let's uh let's jump in there's only one way to find out right always exciting cutting eggs and what do we have right off the grip oh my god i think that we have something i like right off the bat yeah oh my gosh Oh, you know what? I was wrong. <laughs> so originally I was thinking that it was, well, you know, I don't know. Huh. You know, this is a tough one. I'm going to open this up just a little bit more and look around. It could be either father, really. I think it might be the Woma Lesser pin and then a pastel. So I think this might be a pastel Woma Lesser pin. I was kind of hoping that the Black Pastel Lesser Cypress was the dad. But it's so hard to say because this has got some weird patterns to it. So let's just keep cutting and see if we can kind of unravel this mystery together. Egg number two. And as we're getting to, to this, you will definitely start to see more examples of both fathers. So we can really tell what's going on. Okay, right off the rip. This is at, wait a second here. Yep, this is a Woma ball python. So the first two eggs were definitely fathered by the Woma lesser pin. I was hoping that Black Pastel lesser cypress was gonna be the dad, but he could still father some of the other eggs. So uh, let's just keep on cutting and see what we got. All right, and that's the thing. When you're cutting eggs, you never know what's gonna be in them, and that's what makes it so absolutely exciting. So right here, it looks like we just have a pastel, Woma, it looks like maybe just a pastel Woma, really reduced patterning. And that Woma ball is that, again, that really tiny, like kind of pinstripey pattern, but not an actual pinstripe. So uh, interesting. Okay, that was pretty cool. Four more eggs to go. What do you say we just uh, keep jumping in? You never know. Until we get to the end, we won't really know what's in these eggs. And that's what makes it so absolutely exciting this time of year. Another Woma ball python here. So just a straight out Woma ball python. So the first egg was really the all gene animal that we were looking for so far. Uh, three more eggs to go. Let's hope we hit an all gene animal or maybe that other father fathers a couple of these eggs. So let's just jump in. What will we have? What will we have? All right. And interestingly enough, it looks like a normal ball python. This year has been interesting because you don't hit normal ball pythons a lot when you start combining a lot of genes, but this year it seems like almost every clutch there's at least one normal ball python, which is fine because people like normal ball pythons. So uh, there you go, uh, two eggs to go. What do we have here? Okay, this is, uh, again, this is a really nice animal here. This is the pastel. Woma lesser pinstripe, which again, so another all gene animal. So we've hit two of the pastel Woma lesser pinstripes in this clutch. Again, not quite what I wanted with the father, but I'm very happy with those odds anyways. And let's face it, it doesn't matter what eggs there are, I'm just happy to hatch babies, right? So babies are looking really good this year, which I'm super happy about. And we've got one more egg to cut, so uh, let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, what do we have here? And it looks like, okay, another, this looks like a pastel Woma 
pinstripe. So this is a pastel Walmart pin. So all in all, uh, pretty good. Just missing the lesser gene in that one. That's not, so the odds weren't bad in this clutch. We found out what the father was. The odds weren't bad. I do have one more clutch to cut later in the day, but uh, it's only one egg. So those odds are really going to be crazy. So uh, that wraps up cutting for this clutch. Got a couple more clutches of colubrids hatched. They are starting to come out too. Now this is actually a pretty interesting clutch here. I'm not going to lie to you. So basically what we had was we had a female blotch king snake. And unfortunately, we didn't have a male to go with this particular one. So we actually bred an albino Brooks King Snake. And Brooks King Snakes and Goinai are pretty similar, come from the same area. They are a different subspecies, but they're the same species. And interestingly enough, we got albinos. Now that's the part that doesn't make a lot of sense because this Goinai was from like wild stock that was, you know, obviously years and years and years ago, but it was never bred to any mutations and there aren't any albino Goinai or Blotch King Snakes. The fact that half the babies came out albino blows me away. Now the Blotch King Snakes are a little bit more like this. They just have a little bit more red coloration in them and these are probably a pretty good mix. As a matter of fact, a lot of people think that Blotch King Snakes are actually a naturally occurring hybrid between Brooks King Snakes. So those Florida king snakes and actually chain king snakes that have a little bit more red coloration into them. So this isn't really that far off breeding the two together. I'm not a big hybrid guy to be honest with you, but we wanted to get a clutch. The weird thing is, is that there were albinos in it. Doesn't make any sense. How is an animal that's not genetically supposed to be carrying anything and is never bred to albino? We've had this line for like 20 years. How does it produce an albino? Just totally blew me away. Nevertheless, pretty awesome. And then sticking with South Florida king snakes, I love these guys right here. These are, oh look at the feisty little monkeys. These are actually aneurythristic Brooks king snakes or they're actually aneurythristic lacking the red pigment but they're also lacking the yellow pigment so they're this just kind of really cool black color almost a little bit of blues to them. Now the first person to ever produce this was a guy named Lloyd Lemke out in California and when they were originally produced the genetics were not very good on them and you had huge problems with fertility. We actually got some animals from Lloyd Lemke, outbred them like four or five different generations and now they're super strong. They are amazing. I mean, they're just as good as a normal Brooks King Snake. And we actually produced the very first ghost ones, which were hypos of these as well. But I just have always loved the Annery Brooks. And the fact that we were so involved in making these things viable made them more even special to me. So absolutely wonderful, wonderful snakes. And like I mentioned earlier, I've got a clutch of one egg. Actually, it was one fertile egg and five infertile eggs in the clutch. Uh, and the pairing was kind of interesting. The female was actually this champagne hat for ghosts. And she was bred to this super enchi pinstripe male. And that enchi and champagne is really cool together. It's my favorite combination of champagne, to be honest with you. So with one egg, Will we hit a double codom? I don't know. I don't. We could have a normal, we could have a champagne, we could have a combination. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Let's go ahead and see what's in this only egg in the clutch. Come on, just be something amazing. Blow me away on the odds. This is the last egg I'm cutting today. I always like to end on something amazing. Well, right off the rip, we've got a champagne. So that's cool. That's really cool. Uh, uh, I can't tell if it's an Enchi Champagne or not, but it's a very interesting champagne. Ah, uh, I know what this is. This is actually a pin champagne. So it's a champagne is what they call it. That's why it looks so interesting. It doesn't look like a normal champagne. Now the interesting thing is, I'm not sure what a champagne enchi looks like. There's a chance this could be a champagne enchi because the color is a little bit different. I think we might have hit a champagne enchi to be totally honest with you. When it hatches out, we see the actual head pattern. We'll be able to know for sure. But hey, I tell you what, either way, the odds were good on the one egg clutch. So I can't complain. We have a banger clutch coming in the next day or two. That is that Super Lori Leopard clutch. There's 11 eggs in it. So I think that's gonna be either tomorrow or the next day. So tune in for that for sure. So uh, that's it, I'm retiring this uh, this razor blade and we're gonna move on to a new one tomorrow. And after I realized this is actually a Super Enchi pinstripe was the dad, meaning that all the babies have to be Enchi in the clutch. So that was definitely a Champagne Enchi. Can't wait till that hatches out to show you what it looks like. What a crazy vlog, right? Unboxing, egg cutting, baby snakes, eggs. I mean, it was crazy. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, uh, here is an entire egg cutting playlist. You guys can roll through if you so choose. We'll have some other really cool ones coming up. On this side right up here, could you please support my podcast channel called Checking In? We do it every Wednesday. I think that you'll enjoy it. On this side, you can actually subscribe to this vlog channel. Please turn your post notifications on. Remember, have an absolutely amazing day. Be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.